So I can't believe it, guys. I can't believe we're at finally chapter 80 of Kaita Kyo Hitman Reborn. But before we can really get into this chapter, I do want to make an announcement. I think I did say it either in my Spy Family episode 19 or Blue Lock or Chainsaw Man reaction videos uh, that I'm going to be at Anime NYC for all three days. And um, I'm actually going to be working there. I'm part of the staff. And luckily, if you guys know, or if you didn't know, there was a lottery going around for both autographs and for panels. I managed to win for the panels three out of the four that I entered in. So I'm going to be tomorrow, starting tomorrow at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for the Trigon Stampede panel that's going to be happening at Anime NYC because Anime NYC is from the 18th to the 20th and then Sunday the last day I'm going to be at the Jujutsu Kaisen panel with the voice actors for Yuji and Nobra and then for Bleach Thousand Year Blood War Arc panel with of course voice actors English voice actors of Ichigo, Ryuka, and um, Uri. so I am so excited I'm also most excited for Trigon because they did say they were going to surprise us with a sneak peek so um yeah if you guys want to know the beats especially for tomorrow Friday the 18th just DM me on my Twitter legends underscore anime DM me ask me for anything I'm not going to spread it out or I can make a group chat or anything just to say what was going on because I am the most excited for that so um other than that I can't wait to see some of you tomorrow to Sunday at anime NYC and chat it up with some of you guys just have a fun experience and everything and now going back <laughs> to Kaita Kill Hitman Reborn guys it's it's been 80 weeks I, I think actually it's been more, but because I've been taking time off or I have vacation or I probably missed a week or anything, but 80 chapters, 80 chapters. And we have what, five to six more weeks left of 2022 by next year, February, by February coming. I think I make a full year. Sorry. <clears throat> oh, I think we make on this channel one year since I started reviewing this series. So we might end off the year for for reviewing so far about 84 to 86 chapters and then next year I don't know how much chapters we'll do <laughs> but we'll see we'll see we'll do a weekly basis so um that being said I am I'm flabbergasted that we I reached like 80 chapters you know I'm proud of I'm gonna give myself a pat on the back for that 80 chapters 80 chapters so far right that's crazy and we're just getting to the good part. I mean, we always have the good part, but it, it just keeps getting better and better as we go forward, right? So um, from chapter 79, obviously Suna finally went into dying will mode, different from the one that we originally saw. And I will just say this is hyper dying will mode. This is the mode that you will see Suna going forward for the remaining of the series. And so far... He's dominating the fight between him and Mukuro. Mukuro went into the state of humans, which is the worst state of the six paths overall. And for reasons that if you go back to my chapter 79 review video, you'll I explained it there. So throughout the fight, it looks like Suna is dominating with his newfound power after being shot by that specialized dying will bullet, the one that uh, Leon created and Reborn managed to shoot him with. So while he is in this state, again, like I said, he's beating Mukuro, even though Mukuro is at his strongest and everything. And you're thinking, well, dang, Mukuro, you were talking all this big talk. And yet Suna, who just managed to, you know, obviously getting shot, dying again and, you know, reborn and everything. He's in a total different playing field compared to Mukuro in terms of power. And mind you, this is the first time Suna is using this type of power. So obviously, um, by the time it wears off, obviously, since this is his first time, his body won't be able to manage it. 
okay so we have where Mukuno is trying to charge back at Suna and then Suna because um when in the previous chapter Suna blocked uh Mukuro's attack when he thought he really hit him Suna remember he was blocking with his hands and then he gained flames in the X gloves I don't got the X gloves I need to find my myself a pair of X gloves by the way is any kind of kill him and reward fans gonna be at anime NYC tomorrow or for the whole duration three days please do tell me in the comment section below um and Suna managed to melt Mukuro's trident, okay? And uh, the thing that uh, was explained is with these flames, with their devastating powers and everything, it's quite different to an aura. So remember um, the last chapter, Mukuro explained that the stronger his aura is, the more powerful he becomes. Obviously, auras cannot be seen unless someone has the ability to see them. So not a lot of people can see it. Not a lot of normal people can see it unless they have the ability to do so. So um, in this case, in being, uh, Suna's dying will flames are actually different compared to aura. So think along the lines, I would say best explaining it, um, think along the lines of like when Goku go super saiyan you see all the power him his key charging up you can visibly see it or when he goes kaioken you can see it and if he wants to bring the power the energy to a certain part of his body or like say for instance jujutsu kaisen whenever yuji used divergent fist or you see his curse energy forming around him that's basically in essence the closest thing you can say for dying will form that suna is in so when he melts the trident but then he waves his hand in front of mukuro's face mukuro couldn't feel no heat but if it does touch him and it does connect what he is feeling is one the energy from suna's own punch but the energy of the entire flame if you will if you could get what i'm coming from because it's just cut it's as soon as reborn what as reborn best explained it is aura cannot be seen nor properly felt but the energy that suna has on his head is highly condensed and it's used to attack or defend or whatever the case may be. And even though it does look like flames and people may think, you know, because it's a flame, because it's fire, it might, if you go near it, you're going to feel heat. You might get, uh, you might get hurt from it, but actually you don't really feel anything from it until the person actually hits you with it. That's when you start feeling the force because of how dense it is, how c condensed. I hope I made sense. Okay, but just think of along the lines of like anything like Goku or like in Jiu-Jitsu where they take all that energy, condense it and use it as a form of attack. So again, like I said, the fight is being overwhelming on Mukuro's part. And so the whole point of Mukuro wanting Suna, and he explained in this chapter, is because the reason why he sent assassins, why he sent people after Suna to either bring him back dead or alive is simply because Mukuro knew that Suna had a potential, that Suna had the power so that he can take over his body and basically destroy the mafia world from within. Because at the end of the day, Suna is the next line in head to become Bongoa boss after the night. He is the 10th generation now. So by taking over Suna's body, knowing that Suna has all of this power within him, you know, it would not be a problem for Mukuro, who's now in possession of Suna's body, to just overtake and overrun everybody in the Mafia world. And then from after the Mafia world, then he goes to the higher powers that be, meaning like government, politics, and all of that, overrun them, and basically kind of like, just destroy the world. <laughs> that, that's his whole goal but he has to start with the mafia because at the end of the day if we go back a couple of chapters uh remember with uh uh lancia remember that the family that picked up mukuro when he was a child and he you know brainwashed uh lancia to kill his family and everything obviously you can tell uh something happened in mukuro's past for him to have this this grudge this hatred towards the mafia hence why suna became his main objective his main prize to obtain because suna is around his age group and thinking suna will be 
easy and very passive and he can just get to him very easily. I don't think he was thinking all of this would have happened, but because of what Suna is capable of showing, like he's shown in this, in this chapter, in the previous chapter of his unlimited potential, Hence why Mukuro set out this ordeal to capture Suna, possess him, and if he was able to, he would end up destroying the mafia world as we know it, and then world governments all over the world, okay? So Suna in this state obviously is very calm and everything, and he's fighting, and then he's thinking, you know, while Mukuro said that, Mukuro casts another illusion, but Suna's thinking, you know, this is illusion, this is not gonna hurt me, but within the illusion, Mukuro managed to hide, like, little pebbles of rocks and everything. Um, I did know, I, I didn't think it was necessary for Reborn to say that Suna was being stupid, um, but Suna did, remember, he's in this, um, in this state where his intuition is hyper, his intuition is very high, so he knows when things are not real, real from, um, fiction and everything. But he just didn't know that Mukuro hid freaking rocks inside of the damn shadow and the damn illusion. So that happens. Mukuro managed to fool him and then grab his hands because he realized that with Suna's hands now up in flames and managed to now go on the offensive, if Suna is not able to use his hands to fight back, he thinks that Suna is practically useless. So he does bash him in the back of his head and he does kick him, okay? And when you think Suna's going to get stabbed in the back because when he kicks Suna, he launched him into the direction where part of his trident blade is sticking up from the ground. So the way he kicks Suna, Suna would have been stabbed right through the back and would have killed him. And then he would have just, you know, possessed a possibly half dead Suna unless he get medical help, but it doesn't matter. And then Suna, before he can get, you know, stabbed, he propels himself in mid-air. Mind you, Suna can fly. Okay, so this whole time during the whole duration of the fight between him and Mukuro, every time you saw Suna moving fast, evading Mukuro's attacks, it's actually because he uses his hands as propellers to move him from one direction to the next. So now he uses himself, propelling himself from the blade, and then go and launch and hit Mukuro. Well, more like grab his face, uh... Ichigo to eyes and palm in the face and he dispels the aura from Mukuro's body. He purifies it. Now I do want you to take that and keep it in the back of your mind because in the next arc which should start in the next few chapters, I say anywhere between two to five chapters because this this arc is about to end um, very soon actually and after this it goes into the Varya arc. They explain more about the flames in that arc, of course, but Suna's flame is the properties of it. You just saw it can purify other flames or other auras, and then they go more into detail. So if you're new to watching uh, Reborn or reading Reborn, I'm not going to spoil it for you, but for those who have read and watched the series multiple times, you already know this is just one of many properties that Suna's Dying Will Flames is capable of, okay? Because there's actually seven attributes. I'll just give you that. I'll just give you there's seven attributes to the flames, and Suna is just one of the seven okay and this is just one of the properties of his type of flame so the fight does end with Suna defeating Mukuro because Mukuro at first wanted Suna to kill him before he tricked him and it tried to attack him but Suna obviously prevailed and defeated Mukuro without actually killing him so this actually is the end of Suna versus Mukuro if I am correct as long as my mind is not that fuzzy about the the events that happened I believe this is the end it, it was pretty short but like you'll see a lot more longer fights with Suna versus different opponents and everything but obviously remember this is the very start of Suna's journey of being a mafia boss and him unlocking his true potential and everything so um this fight was just uh, a preview of where we're to get in future chapters so guys do tell me in the comment section below on how you felt about chapter 
80 of Kaitekyo Hitman Reborn. For those who have read and watched this series multiple times, do tell me how you felt about this. How do you feel this uh, concerning, at least for manga readers? Do you feel that this chapter did it better than the anime or vice versa? Do tell me your thoughts. Those who have read it or watched it for the first time, how do you feel about this chapter? The links are in the description box. So you guys can go check those out and click on them and everything. And I'm Kimmy Chan of Anime Legends. And I will see you guys later. Bye!